it's good. Mm -hmm. My day is the manager of the manager Coming this morning and for recognising today's importance. Firstly, I wish to acknowledge we are on Turkish soil and we are guests of the Turkish people and we thank them for their hospitality. It's recorded by our official war historian Charles Bean that the boys landed at 4.30am. Symbolically, I have set my watch to go off at that time. Others have joined me and like the campaign, it was not synchronised. The origin of the dawn service goes back to 1928. There are a no, number of rival claims to the invention of the dawn service, but probably the most convincing is that the first dawn service was improvised by a handful of returned soldiers performing a vigil around Sydney's then new cenotaph in Martin Place. They, they, they joined a widow and her children there probably after carousing the night before. You sound familiar? They stayed and watched the sunrise and agreed it was such a moving experience that they would do it again the next year. From there it has grown from those grassroots origins to what we see today. Now thousands gather. This is a day of reflection, of remembrance, of respect. And we are in no need of a history lesson. Many personal family stories have been told and I'm sure will continue to be told for the rest of this trip and into the future. They knew better than anyone ever could that nationhood was born of sacrifice and it was in the horror of war where lives were, are destroyed and the dreams of youth are forever lost that our national identity was forged. Nationhood is sustained by enduring commitment to a set of ideals and values we reflect today on all the conflicts in which the Australians and New Zealanders have been involved. And yes, sometimes the NZ has to be put back into the word ANZAC. Most service men and women may have signed up for adventure out of a sense of obligation or just wanting to be involved. And yes, they fought for our nations, our flags, our people and their families. But as noble as these ideals were, their commitment in combat, their raw courage and self-sacrifice in the face of often overwhelming odds were driven largely by the, them, those closest to them, their mates. Mateship is the heart of what we refer to as the Anzac spirit. It drives loyalty, courage, endurance and humour in adversity. It is the compelling reason for most acts of heroism and the suffering so often experienced by our servicemen and women. For not letting down the team is a powerful motivator in our national nation's psyche. Our military heritage was founded on the shores of Gallipoli 100 years ago today. The battle for Gallipoli was lost, but the war was won. The concept of winning or losing, it seems, is not as important as the respect and legacy handed to us. It's a reminder that in war, both sides suffer. The Anzacs and thousands of servicemen and women lost their lives since would be the last to ever glorify war or their part in it. Their greatest gift to us through their suffering and that of their families is our freedom and the opportunities we are now fortunate to enjoy, to enjoy. We can show our appreciation not just by remembering and honouring them, but by committing ourselves to follow their example. Mateship has never been the exclusive preserve of our Defence Force. It's embedded in our society and I see it every day in my workplace. Not many of us are called upon to place our lives in danger for others. We admire those who do. We hope that if we called on to do so, we would not be found wanting. 
but we can still play our part by less challenging, although no less significant actions. We can reflect the Anzac spirit through our behaviour towards one another. As we gather today to remember and to reflect on the opportunities and freedoms they have given us, we remember and honour their sacrifice. But we can take that act of commemoration to an even higher plane by following their example, by committing ourselves to lead lives worthy of their sacrifice for looking after each other and our families. Each one of them lies as a silent witness to the future that they have given us. Whether by Australian by birth or by choice, to feel a connection is Australian. We honour them the best by the way we live our lives. Truly I say to you, we will remember them. I'd like to now to invite Duane to, and Haley to read the remarkable tribute paid to the Anzac by Mustafa Kemal Ataturk in 1934. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take a moment to welcome our Turkish uh, representatives here today from the Crown Plaza Audio Park for their support. They have expressed to me that it is their duty to be a part of our team today as we are in their land welcoming each and every one of you in peace where we stand side by side. I'd like to take a few moments to address them in Turkish if you may allow me to to express our uh, gratitude for them being here and also explain to them the significance of Anzac and the meaning to them. Sevgili Crown Plaza Audio Park dostlarımız, burada bizim yanımızda Avustralyalılar olarak yanımızda bulunduğumuz için aramızda bulunmaktan sizlerden gurur duyuyoruz. Birkaç kelime ile sizlere Anzac sözcüğünün ve Anzac gününün anlamını ve önemini anlatmak istiyorum. Anzac sözcüğü Avustralya ve Yeni Zelanda kadrosu Australian and New Zealand Army Corps kelimelerinin baş harflerinden meydana gelmiş bir kısaltmadır. Birinci Dünya Savaşı'nın başlarında bu iki ülkeye ait birliklerin katılmasıyla kurulan Kol Ordu bu kısaltılmış isimle tarihteki yerini almış her ne kadar Çanakkale'de Türklerle birlikte savaşırken fazla başarı elde etmişlerse de daha sonra Orta Doğu ve Avrupa savaş alanlarında müttefikleri hesabına önemli hizmetler başarmıştır. Çanakkale'de birçok Anzac askeri hayatını kaybetmiş ve Mehmetçik'le birlikte yatmaya başlamıştır. İşte bu askerlerin annelerine onların hatırları adına bir mektup yazan Atatürk galip bir liderin ifade edebileceği en güzel cümlelerle gönül alıcı bir mesaj göndermiştir. Ladies and gentlemen Mustafa Kemal Atatürk in 1934 wrote the following tribute to the Anzac killed at Gallipoli. Those heroes that shed their blood and lost their lives. You are now lying in the soil of a friendly country. Therefore, rest in peace. There is no difference between the Johnnies and the Mehmets to us to where they lie side by side, now here in this country of ours. You, the mothers who sent their sons from faraway countries, wipe away your tears. Your sons are now lying in our bosom and are in peace. After, after having lost their lives on this land, they have become our sons as well.
uzak memleketin toprakları üstünde kanlarını döken kahramanlar. Burada dost bir vatanın toprağındasınız. Huzur ve sükun içinde uyuyunuz. Sizler Mehmetçiklerle yan yana koyun koyunasınız. Uzak diyarlardan evlatlarına harbe gönderen analar. Göz yaşlarınızı dindiriniz. Evlatlarınız bağrımızdadır. Huzur içindedirler. Ve huzur içinde rahat rahat uyuyacaklardır. Bu toprakta canlarını verdikten sonra artık bizim evlatlarımız olmuşlardır. Now, Vanessa will uh, re read the reply. Uh, it's, it's a letter sent by a mother of an Anzac who was killed in Gallipoli. A response by an Anzac's mother to Atatak's words. The warmth of your words eased our sorrow for our sons who vanished in Gallipoli, and our tears ended. Your words are a consolation to me as a mother. Now as we are sure that our sons rest in peace in their eternal rest. If your excellency accepts, we would like to call you Atta too. Because what you have said at the graves of our sons could only be said by their own fathers. In the name of all mothers, our respect to the great Atta who embraced our children with the love of a father. An Australian mother. Thank you. I'd like now to invite the first officer, Steve, to read the ode. It will be followed by the last post. The last post traditionally marks the end of the working day and serves as a tribute to the fallen. It will include a minute silence and followed by the reveille, and then the dismissal. I'd ask you now all to turn and face our flag bearer, Paris, who is in the western end of the garden, which is in the direction of Gallipoli. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not be then, for the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them, lest we forget.